Back in the 70s, Steve Jobs met Steve Wozniak, and the rest, if you like, is history. The two became firm friends, and although Steve Jobs often gets the credit for Apple's success, it was Woz, as he's known, who was the brains behind the silicon. The build-it-yourself Apple I was his baby, which didn't look much, I grant you, and so was the Apple II, the groundbreaking microcomputer which went on to sell millions. Together, the two Steves took Apple from Jobs' garage to the forefront of the personal computing revolution. Do you think times have changed then? Or do you think maybe with the return of the app on, on the smartphone and the tablet, we're back to the days of the bedroom programmer? Any one person, in effect, can, can be a success. There are Arduino boards and Raspberry Pi boards that young people can buy and learn about technology and even control motors and things. But there isn't as much of it. it was, it's not as easy as it was back then. But the creative desires come out of a brain. And the creative desires are coming out in other ways. The, thank God for the App Store. I am so glad for that, that Apple didn't say, no apps can come out except ones we write. That would have been horrible. You mentioned the Raspberry Pi. Are you a, a fan of uh, getting real nuts and bolts engineering into schools as early as possible? From a very young age on, you don't need the high level math of like calculus, you know, or, or you know, the stuff you get at the university level. Any young child, even 10 years old, can actually understand enough to learn to program. And the Raspberry Pi, you can hook wires to little motors. You can actually build devices that do things. What an incredible learning experience. Or sensors, you know, that, hey, when I, when I, when I say a certain word, you know, it'll turn on the lights. Those are really fun projects for young people. And they are a growing step in developing the great technologists of the future that build the devices we all live with. 